And uh, neither Dave nor myself saw Bound for Glory, but uh, the reports we got were that it was a good show. And maybe, maybe the biggest news coming out of it is they did a video at the end of the show where they announced that beginning in 2024, with the Hard to Kill pay-per-view in January, they are rebranding back to TNA. It will be TNA Wrestling. We're back, they have advertised. Mm -hmm. And that starts with uh, Hard to Kill, which at this point should be called Impossible to Kill, now that they're back to uh, TNA. But uh, they're doing the rebranding because I guess... Uh, Scott Demore in a press release basically said that everywhere we go, all people do is chant TNA. So may as well go back to it. And they um there's got a pop in the it got a pop in the arena. The thing is, is when they first did the change from TNA, TNA had such a negative stigma that they, you know what I mean, that they pretty much needed to, and they actually needed to for a long time, but. As things go, and you know, you learn this is that uh, nostalgia is is kind of incredible, and in time, you know, everyone thinks of you know, you know, it's like the good old days at the company were the TNA days. You know, I mean, they really were. So why not go back? The now good that- old days were the good old days of TNA. The good old days were not the bad old days of TNA. Exactly, because there were horrible days of TNA. But there yeah. were, I guess, probably what two thousand five to two thousand eight is kind of what people. Whatever. Really rave when Kurt about. Angle was there, you know, when Kurt Angle yes. was there with AJ definitely Styles, definitely was not the Asylum days. I can tell you that. Well, not well, not the Asylum and not the you know whatever. But the um, you know, but also it, people also remember things better than they really were. That's a lot of it too, and you know, so I think that that's kind of it. So, I mean, it's you know, in the end. Does the name of the company make a difference? And the answer is no. You, you know, it doesn't at all. Although I guess some people get mad at, at Ring of Honor stuff on AEW, which I think is kind of ridiculous too. But um, you know, it's 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 the same company. It's not you know, it's not like the numbers are going to go up or down based on this rebranding. Just like the old rebranding away from it, it isn't like anything went up when they stopped doing the TNA name. Um, but the negative stigma of TNA is years ago now, so. You know, it's not going to hurt them. I don't. It's not going to help them. It's just kind of a decision. So there you go. Well, the big news stories on Bound for Glory were that all of the champions retained their titles, with the exception of Chris Bay and Ace Austin winning the Impact Tag Team titles. And Sonny Kiss debuted at the show, and uh, as noted, the announcement that uh, Hard to Kill was going to be a uh, rebranding to TNA. And as far as other matches, they did the Hall of Fame. You saw the Hall of Fame. I saw the Hall of Fame. Yes, how was that? Really good. Really, really good. Um, you know, they did a uh, long, long segment with, with Tracy Brooks and Gail Kim, you know, basically, you know, going with the idea that uh, when she came in, you know, that wrestling, women's wrestling has changed greatly from the period that Tracy Brooks started to the period when she left and kind of trying to credit her with being a big part of that. Um, and then, you know, Frankie Kazarian talked a lot about how she's a fantastic wife, wonderful human being. Um, he was really good, really good in that piece. And, um, you know, she was very nice in her speech and everything like that. And then uh, Mike Tanay talked about, you know, he... Well, Scott D.M. Moore talked for a long time about Mike Tanay and just about how much Mike Tanay helped him and how much fun they had with Mike Tanay and Don West. And Don West was a really good friend and um, said that Mike Tanay never got his, his due as far as his impact on the business. And, I mean, he did a very good speech for Mike. And then Mike's speech was mostly on Don and thanking some other people. Um, not much about himself, but uh, really not much about himself. Um but he talked a lot about Don West, you know, and the fact that they did it in Chicago, which is a big part of why he did it himself, was because it was Chicago. Um, all of Don West's family was there because Don West grew up in Chicago. And um, Don West's wife, Terry, was there. Uh, Mike's family was there. And Mike talked, you know, he thanked Eric Bischoff for giving him his first break. He thanked Zane Bresloff, you know, who really was the one who got him his, his, his announcing break twice because, um, you know, I mean, Zane, Bros- Zane Bresloff was always a big supporter of Mike's, you know, because he knew Mike from Vegas. 
and um, you know they, he didn't talk about when worlds collide, but he did thank Conan, who was at the show, I guess, and um, you know talked about how much you know he had always been interested in Mexican wrestling, but how much he learned from Conan about Mexican wrestling, and um, you know just uh, said Zane Breslov was the greatest promoter wrestling's ever had, and um, then he. Um, he didn't talk about, like I said, not about when worlds collide, but he did talk about, you know, getting his break on Nitro. Um, and in both cases, you know, again, Zane Breslov heavily pushed um, for him, um, you know, to be on Nitro. So, um, you know, that that was a lot of that. And then, um, you know, thank Jeff and Jerry Jarrett. Um, who else did he, was he thanking? Um, you know, and then after that... Um, he just talked about, um, you know, just uh, what was I going to say? The the um, a lot about Bobby Heenan, um, you know, and to an extent Dick Byer, you know, just told some Bobby Heenan stories, and you know, just talked about. Uh, but again, it was mostly about Don West. What a good guy Don West was. How much energy John Don West did. How uh, his son Eric's favorite announcer was Don West. And how he has a, wrote a, a you know an autograph for his son and says from your second favorite announcer, Dad, you know, so um, so that was pretty much it. But very well done. I, I really enjoyed it. So they had that, and then I heard uh, I heard from many people that Will Osprey and Mike Bailey had a match of the year candidate on that show. You know, that is the uh, that's a word from people in the chat as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, I think that. It, it feels like every Will Ospreay match is, is like that. Did you ever see the, Sa the Sabre match? I have not seen it yet, no. Oh, really? Okay. That, and I also you, have to watch the uh, Rocky Romero Mystico match from Friday. Oh, I did watch that. That match was, um, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't uh, as nearly as good as the Mystico and um, Templario match from, from a week ago. Um, but it was very good. It was, um, you know, it was an Arena Mexico match, but without the Arena Mexico ambiance. You know, it was like... It, it felt like it was in the wrong place, but it was a very, very good match. The crowd was into it. Um, they worked well together. They were given about 18 minutes to do a three-fall match, did a lot of big moves. Um, but it was not like... It, it, the same match at, at Arena Mexico would have been much, much better. But it was, you know, it was the best match on um, Impact of the last two nights, by far. Um, well, I would say by far. Actually, you know what? I... You know, really, Brian Danielson and Andrade was very different, um, but probably just as good. You know, and it, it, they were just different matches. Aside, those would be the two best matches. But um, you know, I I didn't think it was like it wasn't like match of the year or anything like that. And it wasn't. Um, um, I think, it, and even even at Arena Mexico, it wouldn't have been like you know the greatest match at Arena Mexico or anything like that. But it was, um, you know, it was a solid, great match. Um, so, you know, the the Friday show was better than most Friday shows. I would say that. All right. The rest of the uh, Bound for Glory show, Chris Saban beat Kenta to retain the X Division title. PCO won a Monsters Ball match, beating Steve Macklin, Moose, and Rhino. I Chris, heard that wasn't that good. Chris Bay and Ace Austin beat the Rascals to win the Impact Tag Team titles. It was the only title change on the show. And then, yes, uh, the Will Ospreay Mike Bailey match. Will Ospreay won. And, uh, so, so, Will Ospreay's wrestling Josh Alexander uh, tomorrow at the TV tapings. And then uh, he's wrestling Eddie Edwards for Impact um, next, this, this, when they go on the, on the UK tour. And then Jordan Grace won the 20 person Call Your Shot Gauntlet Battle Royal. So, she's going to get a shot at uh, Trinity's title. After she defeated Mickey James to retain the knockout title. And then the main event, Alex Shelley beat Josh Alexander to retain the title. So, uh, yeah, Alexander and Osprey at the uh, TV taping on Sunday. And then Hard to Kill, the TNA pay per view coming up in January. So that was the Bound for Glory show. Mm -hmm. Hayes versus Dragunov. Yeah. This is going to be very, very short. Dragunov ha has his hair hanging. Over his eyes. That's what he got out of this match? <laughs> I gave that a 12 on the granny scale. Why? His hair was in his face. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, what about we get you a, a pen recorder for your birthday? Brian, I got one. Just nobody knows how to hook it up. So you don't have one. You have one that needs to be hooked up. It works as a pen, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll help you hook that up. <laughs> That's the biggest joke I ever heard. <laughs> you are the worst grandmother. Oh my God. <laughs> God. She just cackled at you. Is she drinking that? <laughs> no, she's putting her teeth in or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.